is our Midnight Mass After Show. We'll talk about each episode. That's our hymn now. Here's your host. Amen. Hello and welcome to Horror Movie Talk's special Midnight Mass After Show. On a normal episode of Horror Movie Talk, we would review and discuss one horror film in detail, but for this series of eight episodes, we will be having an opinionated and accidentally funny discussion on each episode of Midnight Mass. Your panel of expert hosts each week are Dr. Bryce Hansen, who holds a PhD in spookology, and Professor David Day, the foremost expert in scare no-nos. So with no further ado, the Midnight Mass After Show with Horror Movie Talk. That's us. Today we will be talking about episode number six, Acts of the Apostles. This episode starts with Aaron in the boat where Riley just literally burned up completely. (laughs) Burned um, on re-entry. Using the sun of all things. (laughs) Um, And at this point, everything has been set in motion and we get to see what God wants for the island of Crockett. The Apostles who have been chosen on the island, are setting to work doing what has to be done to spread salvation to the rest of the island. We sit and watch in dread, and I have to wonder, is this all part of God's plan? Maybe he does work in mysterious ways. Maybe this is salvation. Maybe those who stand opposed to Bev and Monsignor Pruitt are in defiance of God's will. If that's the case, would you accept the sacrament? Would you follow this God? Before we get into the episode proper, I'd just like to say, uh, is, is this a, no, before we get into this episode, I'd just like to say you can help us out over by, by checking out our website over at horrormovietalk.com. From there, you'll find links to all of our social media. Uh, we do post nor, nor we do <laughs> post normal episodes every single Wednesday, um, so make sure to subscribe and leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and share us with a friend because those things help out more than you would think. And so many people just they just take it for granted, hmm. like everybody takes God for granted. <laughs> um, I would like to. Uh, we will be getting into a prayer right after this, but before that, if you'd like to give us a call. You can do so by calling us at 682-253-4468. Leave us a voicemail on there. Let us know what you think about whatever you're thinking about. And if you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on our Patreon. That's a great way to do so. So uh, thanks again for listening. Let's get into spoilers, but let's let's pray our way. Let us pray. Let us pray. Dear Mike Flanagan again, I, I would just like to start this prayer by saying you are a kind God, but also a cruel God and, um, and, or a creator, mm-hmm. a show creator. And, um, your insight into religion and vampires thrills and terrifies me. And, uh, and I have, I, I, I pray for the characters in your, in your, who ex- continue to exist on the island of Crockett, because surely nothing good can come from the setup of these first five or six episodes. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's get into spoilers. Spoilers. So, this picks up, as they all do, right where the last episode left off, which is Riley just being completely incinerated by the sunrise Mm -hmm. and Aaron awkwardly um, like brushing off the seat (laughs) where his embers are. Yeah. And like, fuck. So that's such such a great, because the last we saw Aaron was, she was like screaming in terror and now she's just like in shock. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a, I mean, I just, I just kept thinking to myself as I was watching Aaron, I just kept thinking, can, like, I couldn't imagine having just seen that. 
Like that's that was such a shocking moment, and you knew it was coming. But I it's guess shocking the- enough seeing someone that you love die naturally in front of you. Oh yeah, sure. This is so dramatic, and and it, and the acting it like um, Kate Siegel's acting was like so pitch perfect that yeah. it, I mean it was just a uh, caught all the shock shock and awe. Hmm. Um, and, and then we get, uh, we, we get, we, we learn that Riley left a suicide note. And he left a series of letters to his family. And then later we learn to father Pruitt as well. Right. Um, and, uh, Ignaz Semmelweis. <laughs> Aaron, I have in my notes, Aaron tells the doctors that they mentioned <laughs> Ignaz Semmelweis. Uh, and washing your hands. Oh, so and the doctor yes. was talking about germ theory, basically that's the right. origin of germ theory. So this doctor in Poland or something? I yeah, basically explaining that before anyone, I was like, Ignaz Semmelweis, but now I remember. The story was basically like an allegory for what's going on right now, which is on this island, which is, you know, hey, people you didn't use to know that you had to like wash your hands and like decontaminate your, you know, your surgical instruments. And, uh, and when they did, when this one doctor, Ignaz Semmelweis did start doing that. Oh, wow. The, the, the case fatality rates just went well, yeah, plummeting. The, the, yeah. The, uh, example they gave was that there was two different hospitals. There's one where it was like the paid hospital. And then there was like the free hospital with lesser care. Mm-hmm. And uh, they found that the birth um, mortality rate was higher at the more expensive hospital. Right. Because and, they didn't wash their hands. Yeah. Versus like the mothers that had to basically give birth on their own. And uh, yeah. And then he, He's he like, learned that like, he, uh, yeah, any interaction with the baby is probably bad. So, you know, wash your hands with a bleach solution. And then the scientific community for a decade like shunned him shunned him put him in a mental institution and uh so that was all to set up when aaron tells her everything that riley told him told her um and the doctor's reaction is like yeah that's crazy but lots of things were considered crazy that are normal now so sure it's crazy that there's vampires turning people on crockett island and people are drinking blood and and uh, burning up in the sunlight but you know we didn't used to know about germs. What'd you think of that that analogy? It's it's like your stock. Like we gotta explain how a rational person would re- react this way. You know, I uh, thought it was really like I thought this analogy was really apropos for right now specifically for our society right now specifically, where you have. Uh, just a tremendous amount of people on either side of of mm-hmm. an issue that's like, it, it, you know, should you wear masks? Should you right. not wear masks? Should you get vaccinated? Should you not get vaccinated? And everybody believes they're right. And everybody believes they're on the right side. And at some point, <laughs> some point someone's going to look at the uh, mortality rate. At for these some things. point, it'll be 2020. Um, and And, you know, we'll know the real answers. But until then... We're just grasping at straws and potentially like stringing people up for having quote unquote crazy ideas or, or, you know, and believe it like, so like take a moment and just step back and go, who knows either side. Well, I mean, uh, the counterpoint to that is he had data that showed the effectiveness of it. And when they stopped doing it, it got worse. Uh huh. Um, so, I mean, I would encourage people to go look at, um, hospitalization and mortality rates for vaccinated versus unvaccinated people. I mean, there's data out there that might sway people's opinion, but honestly, that's could go either way. That's not the way people make decisions. Um, and you can tell that this doctor, uh, has seen some shit because she's like, you see this fucking blood. This shit just lights on fire. Check this out. (laughs) And she's like, Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that's what all of your blood does. Right. All of you. And Aaron was surprised that her blood did it as well. Right. You know. Because she's been taking communion. She's been drinking yeah. the blood of this angel or uh, 
vampire. Blood of the bat. Um, yeah, and at this point, the doctor's mom, Millie, is just fully 35 years old. Mm-hmm. Like, there's no question about whether or not she yeah. can de age. She's, like, younger than her daughter at this point. And I, st- and I feel like there is, I mean... While there is a lot of crazy shit going on here, not a big enough deal is being made of this. Yeah, in the last episode, she came up and people recognized like the miracle of like, holy shit. But you know, <laughs> there's not really a lot of like dialogue dedicated to people's reaction to like, oh, I can see now, right? Oh, I don't have crippling back pain anymore. Like, it'd be it'd is be this kind of annoying to- if there were. I feel like. Oh, I don't know. I think I think there's ways to do it where it's like it adds to the public or group think around it. It makes more sense. I mean, it's un- unspoken and it, it still works without it, but it would be nice to be like have in the church or in the congregation like people talking amongst themselves like about how miraculous people's recovery has been and how everyone looks younger and you know, so I, I don't know. Um, but I agree. Not a big enough deal is made of, you know, her going from almost dying by falling down once to 50 years younger. Yeah. Um, no offense, David, David, what are you doing? David? So Monsignor Pruitt knows that Riley's gone. Like he just, they have the uh, yeah. It's it's as though he felt a disturbance in the force. Yeah, he has a spidey sense mm-hmm. about it. He's got a yeah. He's like oh. he's tuned in through the the angel. Basically, what he is how he explains it. Yeah, he's got those piss sh- shivers. <laughs> and, and Bev is like casting a bunch of shade on Riley. It's like, well, yeah. I mean, Judas is part of the plan. <laughs> Yeah, it's great how she's um like the, the like Bev. It really like watching low, it again. Loki, the most interesting character in the whole yeah. thing by far, because on the one hand, like when things are when things aren't going her way, she's like, "Can we fucking get a control on this? Can we like can we rein this shit in? Should we really mm-hmm. allow him to blah 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 blah?" And then when things are going her way, it's. It's, hey, you know, God works in mysterious ways. Like, let's chop, right. chop, one, two. Like, there's a real dichotomy. Yeah, there's a way on. that she can grab some grab up some more power. Like, she's either all way. about it. Yeah, either way. Um, but, yeah, it's kind of interesting, her character progression of, you know, her whole identity basically is based around helping at the church and helping the the priest specifically. And so as, like, the series goes on, it shows a couple of times where, it shows her realizing to herself that she knows better than the priest. Like, oh, the priest is, bless his heart, he's yeah. just not making the right decisions, you know. It's interesting because, like, if you were to, I mean, we, if you've gone to church, there, it, the church does provide a, um, you know, a, uh, a rigid structure for power right it's a um it it gives people an ability to climb up a ladder right right and be more important and um and it's not work but it's still a place where you can climb a ladder right and some people people like bev do this at, at church and they can they can feel like bev Mm-hmm. Or they can feel, you know, very kind and nice, like your mom, mm-hmm. you know, just like very just genuine and like, mm-hmm. I'm just here to do the Lord's work and help. Right. Um, and so like. That, that's, a, that's a part of me that like, even as I, you know, left the church that I grew up in, I look back and, and I have a real hard time thinking that people um, had ulterior motives in their activity in church that they were like, uh, because in the, in the Mormon church or in the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, there's no real paid clergy until you get up to a point. So any local bishops like the, the, the people equal to a priest and the stake presidents, which would be the people over the bishops, 
They're not paid. Like no that. way. Yeah, they're not paid at all. They what work full time jobs and then they go on Sunday and that is do all the stuff bonkers. And so there's a lot of benefit that I feel is from that in 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 the sense that yeah, you're not going to have your livelihood based on the church, and so there's definitely a reduction of conflict of interest around that. That's crazy from protecting you know bishops and stuff. But there's still obviously bad stuff that happens. Um, but so uh, you you know I uh, it was harder to say like oh people are doing that for you know power or whatever. It's like no no one wants to do that. Like who would want to work a full time job and be a bishop and like be responsible for a congregation? It's like that's a gigantic hassle. Um, but as I get older, I realize like oh no, there's people that are like aiming for leadership because once you get above stake president i think that's when you start getting a stipend or you start getting paid and they they undercut and say like oh you know we don't they have just just like a living wage kind of thing it's like no some of the higher ups are making like executive pay you know wow so it's um it's it's just interesting to me like the the aspect of of church where there's these volunteer positions and there's like places where you're just there to help but there's people doing that to angle for more power and influence and and eventually like a livelihood off out of it Um, and you know shit (laughs) do a bunch of work you should get you know right and and bev you know obviously i mean she must be some kind of I would assume some kind of paid position, but seems like it. She de- definitely enriched herself by, you know, embezzling money. <laughs> right. Is the theory. allegedly? Can yeah. you prove that? Is that what you're saying, Sheriff? Uh, because that, if that is what you're saying, <laughs> I know um, what you're saying. We should get a treasurer. Right. So there's no doubt. Yeah. Um. Th- so the doctor comes up with science for the blood uh-huh. and basically explains, oh, this is anemia. Uh, and, uh, and, and so if you're all anemic, you're going to hunger for blood, Mm. right? Because you got the iron in there. When you haven't had enough broccoli, like that's when you start thirsting for other people's blood. Other people's broccoli. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, blood. Um, (laughs) and then we kind of come to the realization that Aaron's body probably ate her fetus. Right. And that's why it went away. Or resorbed it. Yeah, like it's, Rough. yeah, it's a great uh, turning point where it gives Aaron a motivation for not just like trying to help people, but to like hate this thing, Yeah, you know, for taking away her child. And it's, you see that moment in her acting so clearly of like, oh, this realization of like, oh dear. Yeah. Oh dear. Um, there's, there's a moment where, um... Riley's father brings the letter um, that Riley wrote mm-hmm. to Father Pruitt to Father Paul. He's like, I don't know. Oh. I just thought I'd give it to you since you could probably get to get it to him. Yeah, you know, not knowing they're, they're the same person. And this is this is great. Do you remember what he said in the letter? What it was written in the letter? No, because Father, I, I mean, did I have it written down here? I don't think so. It's Ed shows Pruitt the letter that says crazy stuff about Pruitt, and Pruitt just keeps lying is what I have written down. Go ahead. Well, he talks about – okay, so so his father talks about the letters that he that Riley wrote to him and his mom contain all these crazy things and these accusations about Father Paul. Just crazy. You know, the truth. And Father yeah. Paul is like, yeah, he was crazy. It's too bad. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't doing – he yeah. wasn't doing good. That alcohol, oof, oof, it's a hell of a drug. Makes people accuse people of being vampires. That's just like one of the first things that it does. But blood, though, that's good shit. <laughs> so, you know, he, his father is like kind of eased of like, oh, good, someone told me that it's crazy, so I don't have to think about that anymore. I got the head pat, and then gives him this letter to Father Pruitt, and when, um, you know, Father Pruitt <laughs> opens it up. Um, in the letter that Riley wrote was, um, remember we are dust and to dust we shall return. Right. Which is such a great thing because he, uh, that was the blessing he took. 
Father Pruitt is like, he's looking at this as this is the new covenant. This is like what God right. wants for us. And they have all, him and Bev are finding all this scriptural precedent for, yeah, you know, this is getting eternal life and all, you know. And now that's being thrown in their face. And then it's like, no, it also says in the Bible, Bible that we're from dust and we will return to dust. And it's so it's so apropos, right? Because Riley just turned to dust. Right. And he's he gave he was like, No, we're done with this. We're right. done with this evil. So I'm he's, gi- he's I'm giving in. He's basically saying, No, the natural thing is that we need to die. Like this is not right. This is not what God wants. Right. And so, you know, Father Pruitt's reaction is to crumple it up and throw it away. Which is a I think a really cool moment. Yeah, at some point, um, Father Paul, Father Pruitt, and at this point, we just know. Um, Let's call him Father Pro- Paul Pru, Paul Pru, Pruall, Pruall, um, and uh, and we know obviously that they're the same person, mm-hmm. um, and um, and Mrs. Flynn. Uh, oh, oh, and then we have the confrontation between Mrs. Flynn. Uh, yelling at Aaron because Aaron approaches her and she's like, look, I know you're going to think I'm nuts, but I just saw your son burn up in the sun. Well, I mean, he, how she does it is she invites them to leave. Like, Hey, we're getting on the boat and leaving. You, I just wanted you to come with us. And Cause Riley said, it's time to go. You got to go. Yeah. And before he, before he killed himself, um, his mom is like, that's, that's weird that you're saying that. Cause it's, the mass tonight yeah. it's easter like we're not leaving and aaron all she tells her is that she knows that riley is dead and his mother's reaction is just How to be to be offended you? yeah and like why would you say this to me it's, which is such a it's such a parent thing to do you look at you look at that thing you're like oh that seems like a real convenient you know movie type thing to do or movie type reaction like mm-hmm. In rom coms, were like, oh, they were offended, and now they broke up because of a minor misunderstanding. This one actually makes sense. Yeah, this one like makes sense. your reaction to hearing a horrible thing is like denial. It's like literally the first stage of grief is like, no, why are you telling me this? Go away. Yeah, and then realization, you know, comes later. So it's actually a pretty cool moment. And and this is also the episode where we finally get the backstory on the sheriff. Yeah. Um he tell he, you know he he says he tells his 911 story of like being so inspired as a kid by the terrorist attack on mm-hmm. on the uh, twin towers that he wanted to help in any way he could. That he wanted to help. And so what does he do? He begins fighting terrorists. He becomes an NYPD and he begins fighting terrorism with the FBI. And then, like, so he gets point, put on the FBI Joint Task Force to fight terror mm-hmm. as NYPD. And then... The, he, so, gets, he gets promoted so, up the ranks until the point where he's, like, he's working with the FBI and, right. and definitely, like, trying to, you know, find, quote-unquote, sleeper cells of terrorists. But and then he's the, realizing that the, more I, and more that they're using questionable tactics, you know, and trying to, like... um you know, r- r- rustle up things that aren't there. But not only that, and, and I mean, this is exactly the kind of thing that would happen, right? When you when you're faced with a totally new foe that you can't know, a la terrorism, you, you this is the perfect vehicle for letting your mind just go wild. This is this is this is how this is how conspiracy theories are very easily born. Because it's like, oh shit, maybe maybe we have double agents in our shit. So maybe all the Muslims that are in the task for, oh oh man, maybe they're just a sleeper cell. And th- and so he's like, you know, so then they did it to me, and mm-hmm. I just kept getting demoted, demoted, until I was finally like just glad to just get out of there mm-hmm. and come here to this nothing. And now you're telling me to go to the church, right? And he, he, he makes it a point that, like, he he comes to this island, he's, like, doing the best he can, he wants to help people, he doesn't even carry his gun, and what he gets in return is, like, just overt racism. Yeah. They just think I'm a terrorist. Yeah. Like, it doesn't matter what I do. But that ends now, and then he straps up. <laughs> he gets, uh, he puts the gun on, he's like, it's time to go to motherfucking mass. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, there's there's the great uh, a great moment that I feel is intentional when he finally draws his gun and is like you know, trying to get his son to to follow him. Like he gets tackled and it's very much like they're tackling a terrorist right now. That's like that's the that's I didn't think about it like I that. got the feel like that's like that's kind of the the motivation here is like, "Oh, get down. It's happening. We got to stop him." Yeah. Like it's um I don't know if that makes me racist for thinking that, but I, I think it. No, it no, makes I think you that's. I think about that, like the, this is the implication of the rest of this series, right? Like it's so strong in these last two episodes of like, oh, you, if you think you're part of the good guys, there's a good chance you're the bad guys. Yeah, the good guys always think they're the good, or the bad guys always think they're the good guys too. Yeah, and uh, and it definitely there's this huge element going forward in this that the one that. The chosen religion is not Catholicism on this island. It's it's the Muslim guy. Single guy. Yeah. Because <laughs> even his... Well, that's the next episode. I won't get into it. <laughs> so, um, let's see. So, Aaron and the doctor and, and uh, Mildred are walking around and trying to leave the yeah, island. Yeah, they've, they've bought on. They're like, it's time to go. Yeah. But the fairies are gone. And um, boats ground, are gone. Groundskeeper Willie is like holding parts of engines. Like, yep, just giving every every boat on the island a tune up. Yes, yeah, good old tune up. Sturge is like, we've got them all in dry dock. Don't worry. Every there's no way out. <laughs> and they see this happening. They they realize like, okay, the power is going out. The cell tower is going out. Definitely, all the boats are being disabled. Like. Well, we're kind of fucked. So they go to Easter Mass, and there's a scene with the sheriff where his son is asking him to go to Mass with him. Yes. And, you know, he and he's finally like, cool. kind of acquiesces. And that's where he straps up. Oh, because his son says, like, there's there's something It's going to be happen. a miracle tonight. There's going to be a miracle, and I'd like you to be there with me, you know. To, you know, if... <laughs> If you're on an island where everyone is de-aging and, you know, crippled people can walk now and it's all emanating from this one church. Maybe we go to that church. Pretty sure when someone says there's going to be another miracle tonight, I'd be curious. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and then we get this, like, re- the most militant speech from Father Pruitt. Yeah. Uh, Father Paul. Paul Pruitt. Um which is like, hey, you know, there's a price to be paid for everlasting life. Don't, don't make no, you know, don't get don't get it twisted. Like, this and isn't going to be fun. God asked us to do terrible things, <laughs> so that's what's going to happen now. Buckle up. And he reve- basically reveals everything. So he reveals that he's Monsignor Pruitt, and you know, everyone's like Pikachu shocked face, and uh, he talks about his death and how he was resurrected Mm -hmm. and how that's what, you know, he's bringing to them. Yeah. And there are just a a lot of looks of confusion. And then... um, But also we get this little glimpse into the back room where Bev has got a lot more of that fucking rat poison. It's just an ass load of it. There's more bottles of rat poison than there are, like, cups to contain it. (laughs) That's the way I like my uh, my drink. Strong. Yeah. You know? Uh, it's like she was bringing enough to put in all the cups, but also in the sprinkler system. And um, and Sturge is the one, the groundskeeper Willie Sturge is the one who takes the hit to show everybody. Right. And he, <sighs> Ooh, he dies this, in front this, of him. This felt so weird. Like this whole, this whole in the church, this yeah. mass felt... It goes so dark. Real, it's real weird. so cool. Because he's like, because, and really the thing that, that makes it is Father Paul's like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. When it's so Only clearly. A moment. Only a moment. Where it's so clearly momentary, not okay. Uh, in minutes, seconds even, momentary. We're, we're just going to watch him die. That's it. I promise. We're just, and it's like, that's the worst thing we could all be doing. Like, this is the theater we've came here. You're going to murder this man and we're going to stand here and watch. He's like, but there's more. You're going to do it too. It's going to be cool. 
Yeah. He's going to come back. And then he comes back to life. And this is essential. And this is this is critical for everyone to understand in this ep- episode. If you get nothing else out of this episode, this is the most important part. They've been prepped to be resurrected as vampires. Um, yeah. Uh, but the only way to become a vampire, by, and they've been prepped uh-huh. by taking his blood over and over and over again. Uh-huh. And But now they have to die. In order to become a vampire, you got to die and then come back to life. You got to die. You got to die. Everybody's doing it. So that's important because if you don't die, your body, the, the doctor has already told us, look, if you just stop taking the blood, it'll your body will work it out. You know, you the anemia will go away and you'll become regular old you again. Just avoid death. That's really the main thing. No vampire for you. Yeah. Death vampire too bad so sorry yeah and of course the uh the third option is you haven't taken blood at all and there is no possibility of resurrection for you Mm -hmm. unless a vampire very specifically takes you right and does you yeah 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 does you that way i don't know how that so yeah so this is like the moment in the series i was on board with the series and i i liked it a lot this is the moment where i fell in love with it like this scene this the final like scene of this episode where brutal it just goes so gross full on yeah and because everyone starts taking the rat poison there's kind of chaos it the gets so panicky sheriff tries to you know you know take out you know oh yeah all, we didn't even mention that the angel shows up like that's kind of underselling but the, the angel and he is fucking spooky because the sheriff tries to leave and the angel is blocking the way yeah and then father pruitt is like look at this angel it's great and explaining it to him and then the sheriff is like fuck this he shoots father pruitt in the head <laughs> bang that is such a great thing like how they do that how he's like you know, his yeah. one eye is like stuck open and he's like, Ugh. and Bev's like, it's okay. It's okay. He'll be back too. He'll yeah. be back. Everybody's fine. It's okay. Like everybody realizes. Okay. So there's so much panic going through and there's so many, like there's the few people who are like, okay, we got to realize what's going to happen. We got to stay with these people and like help them through this journey. And that gets thrown all into chaos by the sheriffs being there and, and being like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, throwing that added element of doubt into the whole recipe. Um, and, uh, yeah, he, 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 he freaks out cause he sees his own kid die. Yeah. His own kid, the sheriff's kid, uh, uh, Ali, yeah. Ali, um, dies. Right. But then does eventually come back, but as a vampire. Yeah. I, <sighs> yeah, it goes on and then, just everyone that's turned and like is resurrected immediately turns on the people that haven't done it yet. And just, there's a bloodbath yeah. inside and Bev is, has locked the door. She's like sealed it up. And there's a moment where she's like, Oh yeah, take the sheriff out back. We're going to need food later. Just like, oh. yeah, just like, yeah, they don't want him to, she doesn't want him to, receive this blessing because mm-hmm. he's he's a muslim that select he's not a believer there is a select few that manage to wall themselves off from the new vampires mm-hmm. and that is aaron and kind of uh the doctor uh, the doctor and Riley's lisa mom. actually surprisingly doesn't do it yeah um i think riley's brother yes isn't one of them right um and so they make their way out the back way where Bev is cowering in the corner. She's like, you can't go. Don't go. Like, like, what are you going to do? Shoot me? Aaron just famous last words. Yeah. (laughs) Aaron just, just, just lets her have it. And, uh, and man, that felt good. Yeah. Oh man. Even if she's going to, even if she's going to be back, they got five minutes. She's, she's, yeah, that's, that's the best part. She's like, what are you going to shoot me? If you do, I'll be back in five minutes. And then Aaron's like, pow, we have five minutes. (laughs) It's like, yeah. Yeah. Um, just keep doing that. And then what's, what's made pretty clear throughout this is that the whole intention is father Pruitt 
wants this to happen in an enclosed space so that people can be taught the same way that Riley was given, like, the spiel, given the rules, like, talked about what this means. Like, Father Pruitt wanted everyone to be contained and, like, taught, um, you know, uh, temperance so that, you know, just to go out and murdering everyone. Yeah, that's, and that's not God's will. kind of went against the plan that people immediately turned on each other. Um, but the important part was that he wanted them to be enclosed and not to be let out. And then Bev immediately says like, all right, go out and spread the gospel. Yeah. It's kind of, kind of goes to that boy. What's that? What's that Tommy Lee Jones quote from men in black where he's talking to Will Smith and Will Smith just realized that half the world is aliens and men in black. And, and he's like, no, what? No. Why don't you tell the people? People are smart. And Tommy Lee's like, no, a person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, blind, foolish idiots, and you know it. <laughs> yeah, it's like that's this moment. It's yeah. like it's panicky, it's crazy because it's a group of people, and they're all realizing they're all doing these calculations in their head of like, oh, oh, I gotta get on, I gotta get on board, and like, uh, and then when they come back, they're all thirsty for blood, and it's just, it's just pandemonium. Yeah, so it's great. I'm, I we also kind of glossed over one of my favorite moments. Uh, another like one of the great musical moments in the in the series is when there's the candlelight vigil and they're all like marching up the lane and all singing this hymn together and then it transitions inside the church with the organ and some there's something about that that just like felt so powerful that oh yeah there's there's such a Mike Flanagan in his like press materials talks specifically about you know how all these horrible things happen and you know how you know the challenges of life but in in the end people sing you know so it's that theme is very important for the show and there's a couple moments where it shows that and this is one of them so yeah that's my two favorite moments in the episode is like transitioning into the church with the organ and then the bloodbath <laughs> yeah i'm a simple man yeah I no like, i mean you're not i wrong. like music and blood all right yeah, at the end, Bev does say, man plans and God laughs, which I thought was a good way to end it. Yeah. Um, so there it is. Episode six, Acts of the Apostles. Um, thanks again. Tune in next time for the conclusion. The thrilling after conclusion prom. of the Midnight Mass after, after show. show. And uh, thank you so much for listening we really appreciate it. I hope you stick around for our normal horror movie talk episodes. We review horror movies normally on here. We make exceptions for Daddy Mike. And uh, and so, you know, t- toss us a subscription on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. Throw us a rating on Apple Podcasts. Um, and make sure to share us with a friend. If you'd like to support us, you can do so directly by becoming a patron or uh, heading to our website, horrormovietalk.com, clicking through one of the links at the top of the Banner there says, buy stuff on Amazon. Anytime you buy anything on Amazon, after you click that link, a little bit of that will go to us. This is a free show, and we are starving reviewers. Just trying to scrape up any shard of money we can get. That's right. So, uh, But also, make sure to check out our resident artist. Do you want to talk about starving artists? Let's talk about Dustin Goebel, baby. He's a professional starving artist who fucks so hard, he also takes commissions for artwork from all y'all so contact him on instagram at dgobel zero zero that's at d-g-o-e-b-e-l zero zero on instagram and if you'd like to call us call up the show leave us uh you know your thoughts tell us how terrible we are or how great we are call us at 682-253-4468 we love you and we'll see you on the next episode of midnight mass after show go in peace Bye bye